Resource Management Requiring Authorities Amendment Bill, first reading. I call the Honourable Ruth Dyson. Speaker, I move that the Resource Management Requiring Authorities Amendment Bill be now read a first time. Mr Speaker, at the appropriate time, I intend to move that the bill be considered by the Local Government and Environment Committee. This bill is one which has been required for some time, and it is really um, very unfortunate for a number of farm owners who have been tenants on their own property for generations that this bill wasn't passed some time ago. And Mr Speaker, I'll refer to that situation in Canterbury in more detail later on. But let me first of all get to the purpose of the bill. In the Resource Management Act, there is a term called a requiring authority. This bill raises the threshold that an organisation has to reach before they become a requiring authority. A requiring authority is able to have access to and use private land for the purpose of their project. Uh, many years ago, this was the case when our electricity company, we only had one in those days, needed to put uh, pylons and cables through a particular area and that area might have involved private land. So they were able to access the land and then put their pylons and cabling on it because the provision of electricity was seen as a public good. Um, Mr Speaker, I don't have any difficulty with that at all. Um, if obviously there's specific negotiations required. What has happened though uh, in the time since this original provision was introduced allowing this access to and use of private land is that new types of organisations have arisen and the Resource Management Act has not been changed in order to ensure that the term of requiring authority meets that public interest test. In my view it no longer meets that test. So my bill changes the term appropriate in the Resource Management Act that the uh, requiring authority is undertaking appropriate work in order to get this compulsorily acquired access and use of land and substitutes appropriate with the word necessary. So that raises the threshold in that manner. It then further adds a new phrase in the requirement before an organisation can become a requiring authority by saying that the project that they are undertaking must be in the public interest. So it won't just have to be appropriate, it will have to be necessary and it will also have to be in the public interest. In my view, Mr Speaker, this legislative amendment, which is quite a small amendment to section 167 of the Resource Management Act, would have the overwhelming support of the public, many of whom didn't know that private organisations at the moment under the law have the ability to get access to and use private land. The, the reason that this was brought to my attention was when the Central Plains Water Scheme was proposed. In 2005, the, minister, the then Minister for the Environment had a request to consider granting Central Plains Water Limited the status of requiring authority and the advice from the officials and the legal advice that was obtained was that there was no alternative but to grant Central Plains Water Scheme the status of a requiring authority. That meant that they were then able to go onto the private land around their project area and say, we want to use your land in the future as part of our water take storage and then transferring onto irrigation scheme. The people who were in the Melvins Hills area uh, were, were gobsmacked that suddenly they were told that their private land was not going to be their land anymore, that
that a new organisation called the Central Plains Water Scheme was going to be able to use part of their land. Mr Speaker, some of the families in this area have literally been there for generations. It is more than just where they live, it's more than their home. It's a huge part of their history and they want it to be a huge part of their future. Of course, there was a lot of legal debate about the Central Plains Water proposal. Now, I'm leaving that aside because it's only indirectly relevant to this bill. But what it meant for the farming community in the Melvin Hills area is that they weren't able to use that bit of land because they were never quite sure how long it was going to remain theirs for. When was Central Plains Water going to move onto their land and use it for their own project? This caused huge distress to the families involved. They set up an organisation called the Melvin Hills Protection Society in order to fight the proposed proposed uh, scheme from Central Plains Water through the legal system, um, Mr Speaker, but, but actually if this legislation was changed in the way that I'm proposing tonight, then a huge part of their concern about what was happening to their private property would be overcome. I want to pay tribute to the people who are involved in the Melvin Hills Protection Society. This whole chain of events has been very distressing for them, very stressful, and the, uh, the issue isn't over yet. Unfortunately, I'm not proposing that this bill be retrospective. I don't think that is appropriate, particularly given the amount of litigation that's involved in the Central Plains water issue at the moment. Uh, this is just to ensure that should a private organisation or an organisation where the Minister considered they were proposing a project that wasn't necessary and wasn't in the public interest would not be granted this right to have the compulsory access and use of private land. Um, I understand that the Minister uh, the Honourable Dr Nick Smith has already given this issue some consideration. Uh, I wasn't able to hear directly from him over the last little while about his support, but I would urge his consideration of support for this bill to a select committee process because if it is rejected, then it does give other organisations a complete green light to go ahead and do to other farmers or other private landowners exactly what Central Plains Water has done to the farmers in the Melvin Hills area. So, Mr Speaker, this bill addresses the issues that were brought to my attention and to the attention of the public of New Zealand because of the Central Plains Water Trust issue and the intrusion into the private property of the farmers in the Melvin Hills area. It addresses that issue by increasing the threshold for approval as a requiring authority. So should the Honourable Dr Nick Smith have the same proposal as was put to the then Minister in 2005, if the law was changed in the way I'm proposing, the Honourable Dr Nick Smith would have the legal ability to decline that proposal. He would have new considerations, new tools that he would be able to use in order to protect um, the validity of the private land ownership. So the Minister for the Environment will be required to be satisfied that the applicant seeking approval as a designating, as, sorry, as a requiring authority actually needs to be a requiring authority. They don't just want the status, they need the status. Their project will have to be a necessary project and it will have to be in the public interest. Uh, Mr Speaker, in my view, this is a very serious issue. Giving an organisation the right to access and use private land should not be on the basis of a private organisation in a for-profit project. It should only be on the, in the instance of a public interest project, the ones that I outlined at the beginning of my contribution tonight. So if there is a public interest project, if the Minister considers that it is necessary for the organisation who are proposing to undertake the project, if the Minister considers it's necessary for them to be a requiring authority, then the Minister can just say yes 
and they keep that right. But where it isn't in the public interest, where it's not necessary, um, then the Minister will have the legal tools available to him or to her to decline the application to be a requiring of the